Before you go any further, look below and click the subscribe button. Hello, welcome to Savage Business Podcast. And we are excited to have on again, Dr. Elizabeth Carter. She um, is has a book. She has a book that she's bringing out, The Corporate Sisters. I'm sorry, let me start that over. I've been stumbling. Hello, welcome to Savvy Business Podcast. We're excited to have Dr. Elizabeth Carter on with some of her co-authors for her anthology, Letters to My Corporate Sisters. And we have been talking to some of the ladies you may have seen in some of the previous videos, and we are continuing talking to uh, these ladies to talk to them about their participation in the book, in this project, and just, you know, some of the other things that they have going on. So we're going to jump right in. And we're going to start with Dr. Elizabeth Carter to introduce herself again to you. I'm sure you've seen her before, but she's going to introduce herself to you again and uh, tell you a tad bit about Letters to My Corporate Sisters. Thank you, Melissa. So appreciate you having me and my co-authors on your podcast. Again, I am Elizabeth Dr. E. Carter, PhD, your corporate elevation strategist. And... The reason behind this book anthology, which is called Letters to My Corporate Sisters, Stories of Endurance, Elevation, and Encouragement, is because we as women have been really working hard in the corporate workplace, but we've had challenges. We've had struggles. We have stories to share. And we want to be able to empower the next set of leaders coming behind us to thrive and grow and be successful. But I know when I was coming up, I needed tools. I needed information. And there was no one ahead of me that looked like me that could help me. And I want this group to be that for the ladies, especially those watching this podcast. So I thank you so much for allowing us to join you for this time to talk about what we've been through and our sharings in the book. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you so much. Sunita, can you introduce yourself? Absolutely. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here and to be able to contribute to this amazing effort. Dr. Reed, thank you so much for organizing this for us. Um, I am Sunita Utra. I am a technology leader uh, and I've been in the financial industry for close to now 25 years. And I've been fortunate to have multiple leadership positions across several Fortune 500 companies where I led business transformations. And most recently, I was the senior vice president of software engineering at Moody's Investor Service. I am passionate about empowering women, especially in STEM, and have been associated with several organizations as a mentor, as Dr. Rhee said, to enable the next generation of leaders for us. I also serve as an advisory board member for the nonprofit organization Entertainment to Effect Change, which whose mission is to support the production of documentary films for bringing positive change to the um, underserved communities. I am a mother of two beautiful children. We're now a wonderful young man and a wonderful young woman. My husband and I, we live in Washington DC area currently. And again, I'm really honored to be here and to have an opportunity to share some of my lessons from my own journey. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you so much. Ms. Wendy, can you go and introduce yourself? I can. Good evening, everyone. It's very nice to be here with everyone. Melissa, thank you so much for this opportunity. Dr. E and to my corporate uh, co-author sisters, good to see you all this evening. Um, I'm Wendy Gomez. I um, have had quite a couple of career changes over the last 20 years, uh, which I think in and of itself is a test to endurance and resilience and we can get into all of those great things. Um, currently, I am a talent leader for a chemical manufacturing company uh, based out of Philadelphia. I live and work remotely in Atlanta. Um, so thank goodness for the flexibility that's come with that. Um, prior to joining my current organization, I have led talent um, acquisition in the hospitality industry, in the legal industry, 
Um, I have also played a significant role in driving DEI focus uh, within those roles for those organizations and those industries. And I am also a reformed attorney. Uh, I uh, keep that hat on enough to be dangerous when I need it to, um, but my career in law uh, was on the transactional side, but I always had this thing about people um, and about mentoring and about um, advocating. And so it's probably no surprise for me, at least, that I had to learn to align that part of me with what I do for a living. It took me a minute. I, I undug my heels, <laughs> stopped that fight, and got onto a different path. And it's been a joy ever since. Um, so I'm looking forward to uh, this project really coming out there. And I, like Dr. E said, there are things we wish we had access to when we started out. Um, I think that's why I've always found myself willing to share my stories and my experiences with, you know, younger students and, you know, maybe graduate students that it came, you know, into my world, into my sphere as I was developing myself. And so um, every now and then, I think it's important for us to give back, not every now and then, but, you know, consistently yeah. give back. And I'm so glad that this project came along when it did. So I'm um, looking forward to the conversation tonight. Thank you again for having me. Absolutely. Next, we have Miss Deborah. <laughs> hello, hello, everybody. I am Deborah Bell Campbell, your leadership expert to introverted career women in leadership. So my role, my job, my passion is to help them learn how to leverage their introversion and elevate. And we do that through incorporating five key components, authenticity, confidence, um, confidence, visibility, networking, and goal setting. So I want to take the time to say thank you, Melissa and Dr. E for this project. I've been in corporate for well over 15 years. And what I can tell you that as an introverted person who wants to elevate, right? I want, I want other women like me to understand that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you're introverted. You can still soar. You can still move from mid-level leadership positions into senior levels. So that's my goal and my purpose is to be able to help women move into those type of positions. Over the years, I've held titles like, and I still hold my national um, certified counselor credential because I was a therapist for many, many years. And what I find is I get to use all of those skills with therapy and combine those as a leader in my current company, Inspire Visions Consulting Group. And I'm co-owner with two paths, um, one leader. Uh, so I got a lot going on. All of it is focused on leadership. And on my nine to five, or like I like to say my silent investor, <laughs> um, I am the director of staff development and training uh, of Northeast Florida State Hospital in McLennan. So there's about over 900 employees at any given time. And me and my team ensure that they all certified to handle our most vulnerable population that we serve. Again, thank you guys for having me. Thank you so much, ladies, for being here, and thank you for your introductions. Now, I want to direct this question to all three of you. What stood out to you where you felt like, you know, this is a project that I must be a part of, and I need to make sure that I am participating in this product, project? So let's start with you, uh, Wendy. So uh, it, it kind of fell in my lap, I think, a little bit. Um, I, I think where I am in my career right now, and I, I would also say having the support of an organization that, through all of the things that I think I talk about in my letter, somehow have found me in the place to embody some of those things, right? I think it has been very affirming. And I think over years of, you know, working and learning from some of the, the hits and the knocks you take every now and then, you finally get to a place where you say, you know, I know what I know. Um, I'm very firm and confident in what I know. And I think now it's time. 
I think if this project had come 10 years ago, I would have known obviously what I knew up to that point. But I think over the last 10 years, it's just become a little bit more cemented and a little bit more of a of a natural flow in, in terms of being able to share some things that have really, you know, impacted how I go about my decisions with building relationships at work and, you know, uh, the things that I can lean into and learn from, the, what, the areas in which I want to stretch. So when it came around, I think I also said this is probably a time to say yes more than no, because I think it's also very easy to say no. We can justify, you know, being too busy, being too this, being too that. Um, I have a 17 year old daughter who I'm trying very much to role model, um, you know, for her. And I just saw this as a as a great opportunity, given where she's about to em embark in her own life and say, you know what, let me take let me take the bull by the horn and, and, and give it a shot. So um, it was, I think, a, a, a matter of timing. Wow. And, and having the right contact for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that that's always a good thing. <laughs> okay, Deborah, we'll go with you. How many times have you gone store to store looking for the perfect party accessories and could never find that perfect design? So you had to settle for what you could find. Look no further. Party Elements has the perfect party decor for any occasion. From cupcake toppers, candy buffet themes, plate settings with the option of custom plates, wine glasses, custom pens, greeting cards, and so much more. Get your custom or ready-made party accessories for any occasion from Party Elements. At Party Elements, entertaining has never been so stylish. Reach out to Party Elements at partyelements.net or Etsy at Party Elements by SD. I tell you, when I, you know how you read something or you see something and it automatically just kind of speaks to you? So when I saw the title itself, and of course, I've gotten to know Dr. E here for a while, but letters to my corporate sisters. And so, Letters about resiliency and about how we can come together as women, uh, what we pass on to the next generation. I thought to myself, like, wow, this is this can be major in the way that in the way that it's structured in terms of letters is very open and very fluid. And so I was thinking, OK, so all of these years that I've been in corporate I can't say I was clawing my way to the top or what have you, but just the, the things that I've had to do, the things that I saw that worked and didn't work. And so many people, you know how we look at people and we think, oh, they have so much potential. How do we bring that potential out of people? Mm -hmm. We can also stagnate people in the same in the same sentence, right? So when this came about, I was thinking, what can I offer? What can I pass along to the next generation? What can I pass along to the person who looks like me in a setting right now who feels like they know that they're capable of doing the job? They've been doing the job. They just haven't spoke up enough about what it is that they do. So my letter is about helping people be authentically themselves and just realizing that, hey, you are enough just as you are. Just let's use those skills. I like to call superpowers. Let's use those superpowers that we have and let's elevate. So perfect timing, just like Wendy said, perfect timing. Wow. Sunita? Sure. Thank you. Um, just like Wendy and Deborah, so, you know, I, I saw a note one day from Dr. E that she was uh, pulling to this project together. And what was unique, what really caught my eye that was that she was created, this project was for women, for corporate women, 
you know, sharing learnings with the women by the women who've gone through the experience. And I was like, I got to be part of it, you know. And just like Wendy, I have a young daughter, too, who is in STEM. And I wanted to set an example for her. She's going to start. She's graduating this year uh, from her college and going to go into the workforce. And I wanted to, you know, set an example for her. I saw this as an opportunity to share my experiences and lessons, you know, and, and, and I wanted to contribute to a collective effort with these wonderful, wonderful women, my co-authors for empowering and supporting uh, women, those in the corporate environments where, you know, they face, they may face unique challenges and biases. And I feel like, and I believe our sharing our stories and experiences can be a powerful tool to inspire and motivate others and to create a more sort of inclusive and equitable uh, corporate culture. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, what are some of the challenges you have? And any one of you can, can answer this question. What are some of the challenges you have faced in your life and how they shape where you are now? Um, you know, I think one of the things that I learned early on is, or, or what impressed me so much was the number of people who never expected me to walk through the door. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go about educating yourself, preparing yourself to be in a room, to be in a set of circumstances, to be in a conversation, for you to then show up and see the jaws drop, mm -hmm. you know, and you can see the questions turning in their minds. What, it's almost like they're saying, and you can see them saying, what do you have to add to this? What do you think you have to add to this? And it's interesting. It didn't matter how much education I had. It even happened when I came out of law school and started practicing law. The, the number of people who thought I was there for any other purpose other than being a practicing lawyer. Because I couldn't possibly show up in this skin, in this body, and be an attorney. And, you know, and, and, and so that to me, I was like, that was the pivotal moment. Now I've got to establish myself as credible, as believable. Otherwise, all of my preparation is for naught. And that's heavy. That's heavy. And, and then you don't even talk about the fact that even if you are fortunate enough to have other women around you who have somehow made it, you know, and to the point of this book, are they going to be willing to take me under their wing and, and show me and help me navigate the way that they apparently were able to do so successfully. And sometimes the answer was encouraging and, 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 but oftentimes it was not. Right. So, so that was, that was a, a pretty de decent challenge for me to experience. Wow. Can any of you share, um, as you were writing your letters, um, and you had some, I'm sure as you was writing, you went back in time to some experiences um, that you may have gone through. Did you, did you have any life lessons throughout writing your letter? And how many aha moments did you have? I can start. <laughs> And, and I want to build upon what Deborah mentioned before, which was around authenticity. You know, in my chapter, I talk, you know, I talk about some of my own insecurities. You know, I've been a sensitive and introvert person from a very young age. I grew up in India. You know, this was in 70s and 80s. You know, there you go. I, gave, I just gave away my age. <laughs> but uh, I grew up in that environment in an overly male-dominated society, which in more than a few ways is still quite prevalent. You know, there were also strong cultural stereotypes about working women, and especially as they move into motherhood. And, and I've also taken a break from my career for taking care of my children. And I know the challenges of returning to the workforce, you know, after a break. And this gave me a unique perspective on how to support working mothers, create more 
equitable workplace for all and uh, you know, importance of setting my own priorities, finding my own balance between personal and professional uh, responsibilities, you know, a balance that worked for me that I defined. But going back to my awkwardness, <laughs> and I grew up in that environment as an introvert person, I often found myself, you know, feeling awkward in, in social situations or work situations, you know. And, and what I didn't recognize and realize was that that sensitivity was what enabled me to connect with people at a more deeper and human level. But since I didn't recognize it, you know, I often felt out of place, you know, especially as we go into walk into a conference room and there are outspoken people, if you will, and you're like, what am I doing here? You know, so <laughs> until quite until later in my career, and it so happened that I was asked to lead a complex and large initiative and with a number of stakeholders with competing um, expectations. And I like, jumped into it. I was like, man, I'm made for this. You know, I was able to connect and enable the teams and, you know, just bring out the diverse perspectives together. And that is when it clicked for me. And I learned a lesson that my unique personal attributes, you know, they're truly my asset. And who I am as my authentic self is perfectly okay. I do not need to conform to other styles or expectations. And that sort of self-awareness not only enabled me to build long-lasting and trusting relationships, but also improved my self-confidence. And, you know, that's what I've been leaning in on uh, since then. Do you want to be known as the subject matter expert in your industry? Scan the QR code today to take advantage of the $200 discount for a brand assessment. The assessment will give you a summary of how your brand can step up a notch to get noticed. We have been seen in various platforms and have gained credibility and are known as the subject matter expert for digital media and branding. Sign up today for a brand assessment and a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, Melissa Ambers, don't get left behind. It's time for your brand to stand out. Yeah, I will go ahead and share a little bit. Um, in terms of just the challenges, while while writing this letter, it reminded me of um, my my personal story, where it's been about almost seven years now when my my father passed away, and how instrumental um, or impactful. And, and we know tragedy, death of our loved ones. We know all of that is impactful on, on many people. Um, for me, I was the person who actually performed CPR on him in the home before rescue actually got there. And I just recall every single time that I've shared the story about what happened, I realized that while I was doing, you know, CPR, the two breaths, um, the compressions. I just kind of realized that my life was passing by and I wasn't being the active member of it. And so it helped me decide in that moment, because as a certified CPR instructor, I know. Right. I know when I know how long you can perform CPR. Sometimes people survive it and sometimes people do not. But in that moment, my entire sister, I mean, I had, oh goodness, probably five or six brothers, sisters, nieces, everybody was in the room and they were just kind of waiting for for me to to do perform the CPR. And I just kind of knew when the when his life, when he took his last breath. I knew that. And I began to think about, okay, so what have I been doing? How have I been contributing or showing up in life? Like, what will I do with my breath? And I realized, because I've had that fear of um, imposter syndrome. Like, I knew what I knew. Like Wendy said, I'm just ready to share. I know what I know. I know what to do. I know how to do it. And so just that particular um circumstance at the moment 
it really helped me channel uh, my, I like to say, extrovert, my introversion. And so learn how to, to lead differently is what it did. So out of grief, actually, I felt like I was reborn to a certain degree or my life was resuscitated, if I can put it that way. Right. So that was really my challenge. But since then, that's what I've been doing since then. I've been showing up and living my life as authentically me. So what you see is what you get. Right. And when you walk into the room, like Wendy says, sometimes people think, how does she get here? She didn't really say that much. But when I do say. Most important, what I do say, sometimes silence is golden and I've worked my way up and have helped others do the same, harnessing those skills and pointing out and kind of helping companies and, and people see things that they may have overlooked. That's what we're there there for. Wow. I'm loving that you're saying this because me too, you know, a lot of people don't expect or, or really see that I am introvert as well. Because like, oh, you do podcasts, you're this, you're that. I'm like, but you know what? Being in my house, silent, I'm so good with that. And, you know, knowing when to turn on that switch to do and say what you have to say, you just... Over time, I've just learned how to do that. So I definitely understand the whole introvert and, you know, getting out there. Um, throughout this process, as, you know, your latest was writing the the book and we, when you have, you know, for those that have, you know, the solid investors and, you know, you're in those places and as you're writing the book and something happens currently, um, did it make you want to shift the direction of your story or did it make your story stronger? Who you surround yourself with really does matter. The people you associate with and spend time with have a huge impact on who you become and what you do in your life. Hi, my name is Jeff Hagee and I want to tell you about my Inner Circle Mastermind Group. This is a group that's designed to surround you with like-minded, high achievers who will help you to think bigger and amplify the performance of your business and your life while tearing down all the barriers that are holding you back. A mastermind is the fastest way to get you to the next level. If you're ready to network and connect with other successful entrepreneurs and influencers, go to coachhagey.com slash mastermind. I'll, I'll answer that because I have a, you know, a significant solid investor as I had gotten <laughs> promoted last year yeah. into my vice president role. I find that I'm making notes for the next book because mm -hmm. every day is a learning experience. And I love that I'm still embedded in corporate so that when I'm talking to my clients or my current mentees, I'm sharing experiences as they're happening. And then be able to write all that down to share the next time, my next presentation, the next time I'm talking to someone else about what they're working on right now or some struggle or challenge they're working through, I can then share with them what has just recently happened to me. So we're continuously learning and growing and experiencing. And we snapshot our chapter in time, but we have so many more chapters to write. Every one of these ladies could write their own book of lessons of all that they've been through. This one chapter is just the beginning for all of them, but we definitely have a lot more to say and a lot more to offer. That's my thoughts. Okay. Anyone else wanted to chime in? Okay, so let's move on to the next. And um, I'm going to start with you, um, Deborah. Uh, what is the importance of creating a circle of support? I can't, you know, it's something about those who are, are like me. You know, it's just a community, especially for my introverted sisters, um, just a community of people that understands, uh, as Sunita said, those awkward feelings or those thoughts of things that sometimes other people just don't get. I think that community and that circle of support are those people who are going to rally around you and remind you of those affirmation things like I am, 
I am enough. I am a great resource for others. I can and I am a great speaker. Uh, a lot of times when I've spoken on stages, people always ask or they'll say, oh, you're not. You're not an introvert. Yes, I am an introvert at my core. But like you said, Melissa, I've learned over the years, I've learned how to do what I need to do in order to elevate. And that takes that takes some practice. It takes some skills to learn how, okay, so what do I need to do in this situation or that situation? So just kind of that circle of support and there's people that's going to pat you on the back and say, hey, Deborah, you got this. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, hey, Dr. E, you're doing this or you can do this. And so we become the role models for other little girls to start with as they grow up. The understanding that that awkwardness that you feel right now, actually, that's that's a skill. That's a superpower. Like there are things that you can do that others probably don't do. And that circle of support are those people that help remind you just how great you are. So mm -hmm. having a tribe or, or have a way you want to call it, but just having people who believe in you and support you to kind of help push, continue to push and bring the best out of you. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. And I it, it doesn't come very naturally to everyone, right? It really does mean at a very early place in life. And I think it starts with making friends, right? As a child, right? It is about relationship building at its core. Um, and that circle of support, as much as I believe, yes, and I agree, Deborah, they need to be your biggest cheerleaders. They need to be able to tell you the truth too. And sometimes the truth hurts. You know, one of my favorite sayings is, is, you know, people need to be able to tell you when your slip is showing and you need to be able to take it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think the, the fortunate people are those who have that tribe, that circle, that people who have known them at different parts of your life so they can really see how you have come along and how you have evolved, you know, um, and, and, and you have to keep that network pretty tight because you just, de you don't ever know when you need it. You don't ever want to need it. It's just good to know that it's there, but it is, um, I, I don't know how I would have gotten through some very interesting, challenging uh, parts of my career without knowing I could go to someone's door. Mm -hmm. Right. Or call someone on the phone or say, meet me at this place and let's have dinner and help me talk through this. Um, that I think it has really, really served me in a way that I, I, I often at times don't even need to let more people in. If I let more people in, I almost wouldn't have room. Right. You know, so I, I, I do think that's important. And one of the things that I always tell uh, young professionals is get out of, especially today with every every relationship being d developed so at a at a distance right you got to get in people's faces and get to know people and have them know you be willing to be vulnerable um the world develops relationships now differently but however you're going to do it have that circle that can be there to you know really push you and uh, and and really challenge you when you need to. That oftentimes is going to be the thing that shakes you from your your comfort zone. Nothing nothing is derived from being too comfortable. Nothing. And so having that that group of people that's going to help say to you, you know, come on, you've been doing this a long time. Isn't it time to step it up, move it along? Um, I didn't tell anybody I was doing this project only because I didn't want <laughs> I didn't want too many. You know, I think people would have said, yeah, do it, do it, do it. And I, I don't think I was ready for all of that. I wanted to keep it to myself. But I know that tribe would have said, absolutely, this is the time, you, you know, go on out there, test the waters and do it. So we all need that litmus test group um, that's going to help us get to that next level. So important. Yeah, it, and, and the only thing I would add to that, Melissa, both Wendy and, and Deborah did a wonderful job talking about that. But like we, and I talk about that in my chapter as well. Each of us has some sort of barriers that we build 
for ourselves, you know, whether they are society created barriers or barriers that we self induce, so to speak, fear, self doubt, uh, you name it, you know. And so as we empower each other, the circle of support, we help each other break down those barriers that prevent us from realizing our, our full potential. You know, and, and additionally, you know, from a corporate perspective, you know, as you as we empower the women to participate fully, you know, in the work pay, uh, work workforce and the leadership roles, we unlock the diverse, unique perspectives, ideas, which can also help to drive innovation and progress. So you have a win-win situation. Um it kind this question kind of ties back to the one you just answered. And again, this is for anyone who wants to answer. You know, we always have, you know, we talk about the circle of support and having, you know, those people that is truly there to uh, lift you up, support you and help us, you know, help us all to grow and get to the levels that we're we're uh, striving to go to. But what advice would you have for someone that is having trouble finding that right support group or even just that right support person? All right, uh, just to chime in on the, the prior question, I think the challenge, I had someone ask me the other day, how come women have such a hard time getting past imposter syndrome, applying for roles they weren't really, re really ready for? And it really is because we don't support each other enough. We, the guys, will pat each other on the back, you know, high five, but we're, we're not that way with each other, which is unfortunate. And we really need to get better at embracing each other. And that's why so many women feel like they don't have a support system. They don't know who to reach out to because no one has outreached to them. We're not good at acknowledging and noticing others who may be struggling because we try to keep it together you know, in person, but behind the scenes, we are struggling. So I think for people who are trying to find those who could really help them, they really have to start to, A, outreach into their network, whether it's LinkedIn, find groups that have similar passions that they do, because it may not be at work where people find their true tribe and their calling. It could be elsewhere where there's something very similar, a similar passion, similar interest, similar sports, anything that people enjoy doing. We have to be able to start to step and lean into areas that we don't know anyone, but we have some commonality. We're afraid to step out of our comfort zone a lot for fear of being judged and failure. Like you said, when we walk in, they all turn and look at you. They want to know why you're here, what's going on, who are you, what's your name, where you're from. And we get scared off from that. But we have to get beyond that and get confident about who we are, what we really need to learn, and find those who have been there, who can and want to reach back and lend a hand. But it will take some work. We're not unfortunately coming with open arms saying, hey, I have to see you. We have to figure out how we can be seen and embraced by others. So that is my thoughts about those who are struggling, a little bit of work they'll need to do to find who they need to help them. Yeah. And we have such trouble just trusting, you know, and I get that, you know, I mean, you know, the world is full of people that at times may be coming to you with malintentions, you know, and so everyone at a certain level may have their guard up. But I do think um, we have to learn how to be willing to be a little vulnerable, uh, show a little bit of that willingly. I, I do think, you know, the later you start, the harder it's going to be because, you know, depending on the generation you're from, these practices, these habits have been formed over years and years and years. So again, I, I and I tell students that, that I mentor all the time, you know, I, we have an internship program at my company now and at other companies I've worked with. And I've always tried to instill in the students, you have been brought together at this time in your life for a very particular reason. Don't miss this opportunity to develop your network here in 20 years, 
with a little time, you will be amazed at what this what this network can garner for you. So I, I do think you have to start early and don't look at it from the standpoint, I'm going to need people. No, just look at it from the standpoint of you're developing your relationships, you're, you're learning from people, everybody's gonna have different experiences. And then as you you all kind of evolve and mature and, and go on in your careers, these are the people that now are going to be the sounding boards for you. So I, I think you have to start that practice early um, and, and be willing to take a chance. And, and to Elizabeth's point, you know, um, you know, I know sometimes it's hard because people don't always approach you. Um, but we, we do have to kind of push ourselves out there a little bit, not wait. Sometimes you just got to, you know, grab the bull by the horns. It's not, not easy. It's easier said than done, I know, for some. Yeah. But we have to try. I would say, um, taking back on all of that, Dr. E as well as Wendy, the invitation. You know, I think one of the, the most unique things or one of the unique things about being an introvert is exercising that superpower of observation. So sometimes I know in the corporate setting where I'm at, just I get a chance to meet new people coming into the facility. So I find myself just, just walking in because, of course, as the director of staff development, we do new employee orientation. So we are the first people um, that our new hires see. And so I go in and I meet and I greet. And as I'm doing that, I'm, I'm observing, you know. And so I have a background in mental health as well. So I'm observing, I'm seeing the things that people aren't saying. So when we talk about people looking for help, what I find is, even though I am not that person who's out there like, okay, come on, come on, but I observe people and as I see them, then I approach them one-on-one. -on -one. So when I meet people, and this could be this could be in other settings as well, if I'm just out and about, or I've gotten connected to other women from other women, you know, group kinds of things or doing things together, uh, what I notice is I just observe for a little while, and then I just have a conversation and and be vulnerable, like Wendy said. Just you know, I have to, yeah, I don't look like this every day. You know, I don't look like this. I don't think like this every day. You know what I mean? Like I have those moments where, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to say next. So yeah, I'm just sitting there. I said, but I'm thinking. And usually that's not a flaw. That just means it's going to take a moment for me to process that a little bit differently. And then I don't have a problem because I've learned how to go back and say, hey, you know that point that you brought out in the meeting, like, you know, two days ago, I have some thoughts about that. Can we talk? You know? So I think being vulnerable and just extending the invitation. Now social media, you know, we don't really know what's real and what's not real for people because people are showing us what they want us to see. Right. But you can tell over time just by watching and observing people, okay, there's something else under that. And I can I can help with that. I can help with that. And just kind of extend the opportunity out there uh, for those people. You're not going to reach everybody, but for those people who who are for you, they, that's who you need to serve, they'll find you. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and really, just to, just to add on to everything that has been said up to this point, you know, as... As someone who's been in the industry now for, you know, a minute or two, you know, we all have the onus of, you know, demonstrating our vulnerability and, and you know, reaching out to people and providing that sort of psychologically safe environment, you know, where people, other women or new entrants into the field, you know, they can they can find that that strength within themselves. And, you know, I know, especially as women, you know, we don't do a good job of advocating for ourselves, right? So, you know, that's something that we, you know, coming from a place of empathy to the young uh, young women now, you know, we, we can help them kind of 
walk that path with them so they can find that sort of assurance to be able to speak up and advocate for themselves. Wow, thank you for that. Um, as we're coming to the close of the show, um, each one of you have, you know, put so many nuggets out there on, you know, supporting each other. Uh, if you are that introvert that's having an issue of coming out of your shell, you know, reaching out and just finding those people and figuring out how to, you know, over time. And I can admit to it, you know, it's easier said than done that, um, you know, getting out there, putting yourself out there. It takes time. It took me a little while before I got to the point to where I am today, but, you know, it. I was there. So I get it. I understand that it can be a struggle. So I hope that you listen and heard what these ladies share with you today. And we're going to end the show with Dr. E giving her last uh, ending statements before we go off. Thank you, Melissa, again. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies, for joining us this evening. My one comment, get the book. Get the book when it comes out. Letters to my corporate sisters, letter, stories of endurance, elevation, and encouragement coming out in March. The ebook first, then the paperback. And if you have a story, if you want to write a letter, would love to have you in the next edition of Letters to Our Corporate Sisters. I only have the first 11 in this book. There are millions and millions of millions <laughs> of other stories that need to be heard. So I thank my co-authors immensely for saying yes to be the first. And for those who are to come behind them, we have started a movement and I'm so excited about it. So thank you, Melissa. Thank you. Follow us on our Instagram at Savvy Mag Biz and on our YouTube channel, Savvy the Business Podcast. <music>Thank you for joining us on Savvy, the business podcast. If you want to be a guest, send an email to media at SavvyMag.biz. That's media at S-A-V-V-Y-M-A-G dot B-I-Z. Don't miss out on the opportunity to be heard by millions.